Hey guys, I wanted to share something a little bit different with you today because I had the enormous honor of interviewing Gary Vaynerchuk. For those of you who don't know Gary, he's a passionate entrepreneur, super passionate entrepreneur, and the author of two New York Times bestselling books, Crush It and The Thank You Economy. His newest book, which is called Jab, 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 Right Hook, is coming out in November. Gary's always been a huge inspiration for me, and he's one of the main reasons, actually, that I started putting calculus videos online in the first place. In the interview, I asked Gary for his thoughts on the changes we'll see in education over the next few years, and we also talk about what students should think about when they weigh college against other career path options and how they can distinguish themselves in the job market. My first question for you, Gary, I know you said that education is going to be super disrupted over the next, you know, 10, 20 years, and obviously, you know, unmanageable student loan debt is a huge issue. There's just a lot of stuff going on in this space right now, and I'd love to know and just kind of get your thoughts. If you were the president of a university right now, can you think of some of the things that you might be doing to try to prepare your school to be competitive and successful over the next, let's call it, you know, five, ten years? Well, if we're talking about five to ten years, not knowing a lot about being a president of the university, but what I'm probably pretty sure of is that I don't think the disruptions that I'm referring to happen in the next five years. And so I would definitely be too care- careful to not jump ahead and try to do too much change right away and hurt the revenue streams that we have in place already, right? Right. If that's the goal, right? If the revenue is the goal. And, I, and it may or may not be, but I'm just assuming it is because money tends to be an important thing everywhere. Um, but if I was thinking in 20-year terms, I would, and even in five, I would definitely start creating the infrastructure to allow the thinking and the debate of what digital, you know, education look like, alternative teaching methods, um, how do we really extract as much value as possible for the students and give them a certain, like, how are we going to convince people that we're worth getting into debt for or or worth the $120,000 a year and or $160,000 for uh, four years, you know? So, you know, I, I think there's massive disruption coming. I think that there's a heavy debate. The rise of entrepreneurship and the infrastructure of the internet is creating heavy debate around, you know, the value proposition. Obviously, there's certain sectors that are going to do better than others, but, there, you know, I would say understanding the digital landscape, really understanding, letting the board and the other people that make decisions understand what's happening on, on Code Academy and Khan Academy and General Assembly and Corsica. You know, there's so much, so much true General Assembly and, you know, so much true... Um, innovation coming and uh, I would make sure that everybody's fairly educated and not naive and not and not stuck in their old ways because it's coming and we need to be prepared for it. Yeah absolutely and to kind of follow up on that point I know you talk so much in business the business world about putting the customer at the center of things and you know poll marketing listening to the customer developing that relationship you know making them feel special and and I feel like with you know, especially universities right now and, you know, top tier universities, you see a lot of like, you know, the university is special. They're at the center of it. And it's like all these students clamoring to to get into that university. And the students aren't really the focus or the the special part of the relationship, you know, the university is. And that to me seems kind of in opposition to what we're talking about in the business world of, you know, reaching out and, and, and engaging that relationship. Do you think that that kind of relationship applies at all to education, that we'll see any kind of shift? Once people don't feel like they have to have a Harvard degree or a Yale degree or a Columbia degree or a University of Chicago degree or on and on and on, you know, once the universities lose their leverage, once people don't hire just because you went there, so it's going to be a very big shift, and it's going to be quick and swift, and all the lack of, you know, humility and care and real understanding and putting students first, not boosters or the university brand equity, are going to catch up to these universities, and they're going to be in big trouble because nobody's going to, everybody's going to kick these schools on the way down. Yes, I think they should be thinking about that. No, do I think they're going to do it? And yes, do I think they're going to all get kicked in the face on the way down? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be appropriate, right? They're right. Not exactly. A couple of a couple of universities will. There'll definitely be five to seven universities that we know right now that will translate, move quick enough, make the right biz dev deal, right partnership, 
to keep some sort of brand equity around, right? And so brand equity doesn't go away, and that's what these universities are built on, right? Yep. They're built on the bumper sticker. They're built on the, the sweatshirt. So even if Harvard, quote unquote, business model goes out of business, they'll license their name to a up-and-coming startup that does education, right? So they'll be around, but many of the ones that are not in the 0.01 top percent will be affected heavily. Yeah. So let me ask you this. You mentioned earlier, you know, Khan Academy and some of these other, you know, big online education sites that are just doing really amazing things. Do you see or can you identify, you know, a particular product or a website that you see today? Or can you imagine one that doesn't exist yet, but that you think should exist that will kind of have, you know, one of the biggest effects on the disruption of things? I I think the Khan Academy and Code Academy and Corsica and all these things, you know, Skillshare, they're all doing the same thing, right? This school of like eight or nine platforms and websites have clearly opened Pandora's box. And I would tell you that they're all disrupting education from an early stage, but there will be either a school that JVs with a startup like this or or some sort of smarter, higher-end positioning of the University of Phoenix play that will definitely, definitely make massive impact in the market. And so, you know, I'm not versed enough in the educational software world to really make a bold prediction on that or give the in-depth answer you're looking for, but I will tell you this. Pandora's box has been open, and whether one or two of the ones that are in place now evolve and really decide to attack college or if the thesis of what these seven or eight are doing gets applied by somebody who really wants to take a shot at it, you know, the former dean of Stanford who's become disgruntled and realizes he did the wrong thing <laughs> or it's the wrong thing or it, or it was fine when he did it, but it's not right, or the former dean at UNC that she felt that, you know, it was great while she was doing it, but the world's changed and she sees the world through her grandchildren's eyes teaming up with the right technology partner, now all of a sudden you have that phenomenon. Yeah, absolutely. Does it feel to you, from what you know about what's happening in the education space, that we're seeing a bit of a gold rush there as well because there's so many amazing sites popping up and you said, you know, a higher brand University of Phoenix, you know, style website, but do you feel like it's coming? Do you feel like there's a massive shift happening? Yes, and I think it's just starting. Just starting now? I think it's I think it's the early days. I think the education technology is very early, and we're going to see an obnoxious shift over the next 15 years. Obnoxious, like unrecognizable. Awesome. So right now you rec- right now you recognize it, right? Yeah. But in 20 years, I don't think you will. Right now, we've got the flirting of an inkling that there might be something truly happening. Um, I think, and you're going to take and don't forget. The thought of like sending your kids to college, like my generation, a 37-year-old who now has two kids, I'm still, even as progressive as I am, I'm still raised as somebody who thinks that you send your kids to college. It's these kids that are four years old right now that will be hearing all this other alternative messaging while they grow up that when they have kids, so we'll consider it and actually make the initial shift. So my intuition is actually more of a 30-year play. Yeah. Like every five now. You know, so like, you know, but but we're there. I mean, it's this, this, like I said, Pandora's box is the right thing. We are clearly there and it's just a matter of time. So let me ask you this, you know, just talking about kind of the difference in, in generation. And I'm thinking about people who are in college right now. They're in the thick of it. They're already in their second, third, fourth year of college, whatever. And they're, you know, they're going down this certain path. So I get a lot of college students, especially in like engineering, science, physics majors for people in those fields or really any field just coming out of college. What advice would you maybe give to them about distinguishing themselves, like building their own personal brands versus, you know, going out into the market with like a traditional resume, you know, paper resume? What's the best yeah, thing? I mean, you, can't, you, you can't get a job that you really, I mean, you can, but like very few and far between in today's world get a job predicated on the name of the brand equity of your college. This is why college is in trouble. Like, it's harder to just get a job just because you went to the best school. Thus, now you need to rely on your brand equity and what you do. And so I would highly recommend a couple things. If you know, like, I don't know enough about the students that you're targeting, right? Sure, yeah. Especially the biggest and things of that nature. But I would say this. If you know of people that have your job or recently have gotten the job that you want, and they did not go through the traditional path of the four year, this, that, the other thing, and you're collecting heavy debt to do that, you need to really debate that. 
Yeah. I mean, if you know somebody who's getting the job you're looking for and they're getting it because they dropped out of freshman year and they went out and did some good stuff and they got that job, you need to look at that blueprint only, again, if you're amassing real debt. If you're not, well, if your parents are paying for it, then just enjoy, enjoy right? Like, <laughs> yeah. have fun. But, like, it gets a lot harder from here. So, like, jerk around a little bit. A B and a C will be just fine. Nobody cares about your grade point average. Right. It's graduating from like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, um, so that's it. It's really as simple as that. If you can get to where you want to get to without, it's why businessmen like me, why I never cared about college, because I knew that I could get to what I wanted to get to without it, because so many people have been successful entrepreneurially without education. Now, I don't know in your demo and the people you're talking about if they can achieve those goals without the piece of paper. If they can, it's probably becoming more common than it used to be. And if they can, they need to consider it seriously. And you're saying kind of that people don't really have the luxury of just not thinking about it anymore, you know, instead maybe exploring some other options. I feel like I've seen people who are self-taught, you know, online through Udemy or Coursera or whatever, some of these other, you know, online schools and learn how to program and, you know, earn six figures and are very successful as, you know, computer programmers. If you can get, if you can get to where you want to be to in four years and not amass debt, you have to think about that. Now, if you want to mass debt because you're having a ball going to this university and it's what you've always wanted to do, God bless you. Sure. But if you are going to college as a gateway to get your career in motion and there's an alternative way to do it that costs you a lot less headaches financially long term, you have to do that. Because it's a it's a, you know, one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollar decision that that you need with, to be making. With real interest. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars decision. That's the baseline. But right. When you start applying the interest. There's people that are like working to pay off their school their whole lives. Yeah, absolutely. Or at least well into their mid twenties and thirties. When alternatively, they could have taken an online education course. They could have go and interned for free somewhere and got real life experience and just figured it out manually. Like again, not knowing the demo of your students. I don't want to go say drop out of school. Right. All I'm saying is especially for engineers and the people that think about actual execution, will engineer the actual situation. If you're able to get to that $150,000 job at Facebook and that's what you want, there might be another way to do it. And if there is, pay attention to how that's done. Awesome. And there might not. I mean, you know, Facebook is a pretty snobby, like, <laughs> what school did you go to place? So you meet, if you want to go there, great. But I can tell you right now, if you want to make six figures as an engineer at Vayner Media and be part of a great, like, New York City, you know, social media agency, I don't give a shit if you went to college or not. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Just pay attention to, just think five years out and think about if you're doing, to answer your question finally, are you okay with your current situation? If you are, great. But if you're worried and if you can apply five years from today and think about what it's going to mean, pay attention to that. And try to be more conscious about actually building more, your path to get where you want to go. Less traditional, more more new wave. It's 2014. you got to think about the world differently. It's about 1965. <laughs> awesome, Gary. Really, really great advice. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate your time. You rock. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk to me. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So I hope you guys enjoyed that interview as much as I did. Let me know in the comments below where you think education is headed.